Don't want to waste one moment. Stage has been set. I tell you, the weather were all two more minutes and we wouldn't have been able to get out. Wouldn't have been able to get out. I want to welcome all of those that are watching us online and um, just to all of the saints, the visitors that are here. Let's enter into this prayer that was just prayed because this morning is going to be it's going to be, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but we got to get it. Ephesians chapter number one, I want us to look at that, and we're going to be in chapter number one and chapter number two. Now, I'm going to read quite a bit of scripture in Ephesians two, and I'm in the New King James so if you'll put that up on the screens in that version. Ephesians chapter number one, verse number three says, Bless be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice the tense here. Who has blessed us? with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Wow. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love and having predestined us to the adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself. So he predestined us by the adoption as sons by Jesus to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved in him. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which is made to abound to, to us word or toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which, are, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Once again, that I just want to pause to say that that verse number 11 lines right up with with Romans 8 and 28, which says all things work together for good for them that, that love. It's not talking about bad things. It, it, I'm, I'm so, I'm, I'm going, I'm so, I'm so intolerant with bad doctrine now. Uh, I'm just got to hit it. I just got to hit it and expose it and bring us into truth. It's not talking about bad things, demonic things, lost things, broken things, it's talking about, no, God's working everything according to his will to get you into the purpose of his will, which is that we might receive sonship. And so, and so once again, it says, according to as he, is, as he works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory in him. You also trusted after you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also you have believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Now I said all of that and then this is key because verse 15 starts off with therefore. So verses 1 through 14, 
We're getting to the bottom of why he shared all that. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance? What is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him. He put all things under his feet and then gave him to be the head over all things to the church. He put all things under his feet and then gave him to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all and all. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works, or supposed to anyway, who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we once conducted ourselves, among whom also we once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. We were by nature children of wrath, just as others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love in which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. I just want to say it again. <laughs> to those of you that are in Christ and those that are even in the world post Christ, God has one will towards you and that is to be kind to you. He will in no way hurt you, harm you, break you, shake you. He will in no wise injure you, cause trouble for you. He will in no wise take you through a valley before you get to the mountain. He will in no wise do all of those things. Because he has one goal for you. I want to show my kindness toward those who are in Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourself it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, Paul lays out the whole treasure trove of spiritual things that happened to us after the resurrection of Christ. But then he prays, oh God, help them to know it. 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 All of these things that Christ has done for us, let their eyes be enlightened. Let them come to know it. And that is the prayer that we move into from the apostle today, that is what pastor just prayed that you would hear. You got to hear today. This, this can't be just a, another day. You, you got to be enlightened today. 
Something's got to dawn on you, dawn on us in a greater way, in a greater measure, because Jesus has paid for too much that is being left on the table in this modern generation of Christianity. We have got to start to get a revelation of what he did for us and begin to move out into that. So tonight, you, I mean, today you're going to have to make a decision. You have to make a decision. It's a decision. It's a decision you have to make that I'm going to intentionally move out into what Christ has died for me to have. You got to make that choice today. Now, I want the subject matter because I want to make it so plain. I'm very passionate this morning um, because because I I, I'm, I want you to grab a revelation. But number two, I'm I'm coming after religious tradition. I'm coming after it. It's hindered us. It's it's absolutely stolen the benefits of Christ. In our lives, we've suffered much from not walking in these truths and revelations. And today, I'm aiming to decapitate it, to take it out in your mind once and for all. And so you got to hear. You got to hear. And I don't care what you've heard. You have to hear today. You have to hear this today. Because a lot of what I'm going to say today has got to replace what you've heard. A lot of what I've got to share has got to re- you got you're going to have to rearrange your theology. Now, in him, in him, in him is what I want you to leave here down in your soul, I mean inscribed, in him. Now, to understand this revelation and understand where we're trying to go today, we have to come to a conclusion. You know, there comes times where assessment is needed. Yeah, there comes a time where we have to we have to just assess some things. And and because of the call of my life, I always think macro. Because that's the assignment I have ultimately to the body of Christ. I'm always looking at the body of Christ globally, worldwide. Then that comes on down to locally Christ Nations Church and then into my life and Jay's life. We're we're constantly assessing things in our house daily, 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 as we pray, as we hear God, as we get revelation, we're always uh, assessing daily what we need to do to manifest in the earth all that Jesus died for us to have. And, And so... As you begin to have that kind of push in your life, God begins to reveal to you revelation after revelation, understanding after understanding, enlightenment after enlightenment to get you into what you desire. And what I'm finding out in the body of Christ is we preach Jesus, we sing about Jesus, We pray to him. We talk about him. But ain't nobody trying to be like him for real. I'm talking about for real. (laughs) I'm I'm talking about, and this is just my assessment. I could be wrong. Forgive me if I am. Just overlook it. But, 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 But I've been around enough to find out that he ain't really the focus. He ain't really the intention of people. When you hear them talk, they don't ever bring that up. They don't ever bring up what they're doing to press into that. They're they're never talking about how they're growing into that. It never comes up on the five goals in life.
And what all of this is supposed to be like, be about, is us being Christ-like to the degree that the world who sits in darkness sees the bright light and says, I don't know what those people are doing, but I want that. That's what they did in Jesus' day. It didn't matter what the Pharisees had taught them. It didn't matter what the Sadducees had taught them. It didn't matter what their family said. All they knew is they were broken and they needed healing. They were blind and they needed to see. They were dumb and they needed to talk. They were lame and they needed to walk. They were brokenhearted and they needed to be wounded. And they said, I don't care what nobody else has to say. That's what I want and he's got it. The church is supposed to be exactly like that. But you got people on your job crazy and people in the church crazy. You got people on, oh God, let me, let, uh, let me stop. Let, 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 let me, let me uh, boy, I tell you. And so, and so the distinction, that is the, the contrast. That is supposed to be in the earth between the children of God and the children of darkness. It's just not there. Yes. Yes. It's just not there. It's just not. So now we can complain about it. Or I can come in here and teach you in hopes that God would enlighten you to desire what God purposed for us before the foundation of the world, that we should be his children, showing to the principalities and powers of this world the exceeding riches of God's grace and goodness toward us. That right there would be a start. You know, it really would. It would be a start to just start way down in elementary school, just, 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 just way down at the bottom and just teach that God is good. That would be a start because I'm hearing so much and have heard so much preaching in the body of Christ about how God is responsible for a lot of the things that happen in your life. That's just this doctrine that God either allowed it to happen to you. What kind of crazy doctrine is that? You see a car coming down the road. Your child is in the middle of the street and you allow the car to hit the child what parent would do that so now how in the world is god gonna allow you we gotta start way down there we gotta just start way down there with the fact that no, for us who are, <laughs> who are born again, and even those who are not, God is trying to be one thing to you, good. Now the devil is trying to kill you. The thief is trying to steal, kill, and destroy from your life. But if you got an ideology that God will allow him to steal and allow him to kill in some kind of way, he's going to work this for his glory. Boy, if I hear that one more time. Some kind of way he understands. Some kind of way he's got a bigger plan for it. He's good. Say it. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. 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 Now, I want to teach you, so I'm just going to act like all of what I just said, the last 10 minutes ain't you. And you're ready to move into these things. You got to get this revelation called in him. In him. 
Now, what I'm about to say for the next 40 minutes is going to be tough. It's going to be good news, but it's going to be tough to receive. Because a lot of us have so much religious tradition in us that we've been taught some kind of way, you got to work for it. You got to earn it. You got to pray it through. You got to. Somebody told me the other day, it it just shows me how much teaching needs to be done because we were talking about prayer and warring in prayer and spiritual warfare and all those things. And they were like, you know, first of all, this notion, first of all, is that, you know, God ain't always speaking. You know, I pray, but the Lord ain't said nothing. You lying. Just chalk it up. You lying. There is no such thing as God not saying nothing to you. So just get that out your head. He talking. You just can't hear him. Because the spirit is here to lead you and guide you in all truth. I'll show you all things to come. I'm calling to me. I'll answer you. I pray, you know, you did. Yeah, so, so just stop all that. No, he's talking. <laughs> you can't hear him. You can't perceive it. You might not understand it, but, the, but, the, but the, no, 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 he's talking. But and so they were like, because sometimes, you know, you got to just pray through. Like Daniel prayed and it took him 21 days. I'm like, Daniel, what's that got to do with me? I ain't Daniel. Daniel is on a whole different covenant. He didn't even have authority over the devil. He wasn't in Christ, so an angel had to come to deal with an angel. I ain't got to wait on no angel to come to deal with no spirit. But look what the Lord told me to say. From the first day you prayed to, you prayed out to me, I sent an answer that was war in the heavens because of spiritual authority. Now, now we got to change some stuff. We have embraced a gospel of struggle. We have embraced a gospel of hardship, a gospel of pain, a gospel of ups and downs and ins and outs, a a gospel of trouble. We've embraced all of that because we have not understood what we have in him. So I'm going to make this very plain. I'm going to throw it out there and let you chew on it. Look at Ephesians chapter number two. Are y'all with me? If you're getting a little, you know, agitated on the inside, a little irritated, I'm doing my job. Ephesians two, look at this. Verse number five, even when we were dead in trespasses and sin, he made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Look down, verse number eight. For by grace, you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Okay, here's something you got to settle. That salvation is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. Pastor Iron, can I finish this Wednesday because I I might not get done today. Thank you. It is the gift of God. Which means everything that comes with salvation is a gift from God. If it is a gift from God, you don't have to earn it. If it is indeed a gift, salvation If I'm saved by grace, that is the gift of God. That means everything that comes with salvation is God's gift to me. So let's break it down. Healing is a gift. P 
Peace is a gift. The Holy Spirit was a gift. The gifts of the Spirit are the gifts of the Spirit. <laughs> That's a gift. Authority is a gift. Power, a dominion over the enemy is a gift. Protection is a gift. Provision is a gift. And et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's a gift to me. How did I get it? How is it so free to me? It is free to me because I didn't earn it. I couldn't have earned it. One person earned it. This is the first revelation you got to realize. God has made you no promises. I got, just think with me. He has, he has made no promises with you. None. God hadn't promised you nothing. So when you stand up talking about, I received the promises of God and I reclaim the promises of God, they're not yours. God has never made any promise to you. You know, I like the way you're looking at me. You're going to love this. You're going to love this because, see, this is why we're messing up. He hadn't made you no promises. Your Bible is very clear that God has only made a promise to two people. On this earth, Abraham and his seed. His seed is Christ. So the whole covenant between you and God ain't even between you and God. The whole covenant is between God and Christ. And if you receive Christ, you get in on it. Oh, you got to hear me. You got to hear me. You wasn't worthy to make promises to because you wouldn't keep your end of the bargain. <laughs> you wasn't worthy to be trusted because you couldn't keep your end of the bargain. He tried that once before and man broke it. God says, I got to send somebody who can't break it. And that's when Jesus stepped down to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, hung, bled, and died so that he could receive salvation for man from God. And when God raised him up, the whole covenant of healing, deliverance, protection, peace, joy, provision, deliverance, wisdom, power, might was given to Christ. And God says the only way you get what I promised in the earth is you got to be in him. In him is how you get it. That's why you got to be born again. That's why people who preach the gospel of inclusion don't get it. They preach that everybody got it. That when Jesus died, he reconciled everybody. I beg to differ. Because there's one caveat to that is. He died for the whole world, but the whole world can't receive what he got unless the whole world receives him. Because you got to be in him. And he don't just put you in him. You got to receive the gift. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You got to receive it. You got, so now, all of the promises of what God would do for humanity was made between God and Christ. The only way you get in on it is you got to be in him. Now, once you are in him, this is the amazing thing. By grace, you came through the door. Now you get it. You didn't earn nothing. Jesus did. You didn't pay for anything. Jesus did. So you can't claim nothing outside of Christ because it's in him that you have forgiveness. 
It's in him that you have redemption. It's in him that you have healing. It's in him, which means everything that God bestowed upon Christ when he raised, when he was raised from the dead, we are benefactors by virtue of being in him. Now, why is this good news for you? Because it is the gift of God. It is like I bought the property. I got the deed. I paid the money. But I gave you the house. Now, how dare you walk up on that property like you did anything to receive what you just inherited? You didn't earn it. You didn't qualify for it. It was given to you by virtue of you being in him. If you don't see yourself in him, you are out of order in your whole relationship with Christ. You're out of order in your whole relationship with God. Which is why a lot of things do not happen. Because you're trying to go to God outside of Christ. And when you do that, you think you have to earn it. You can always tell when somebody don't know if they're in Christ and what they received in Christ because they have this works mentality. And God won't let you work for it. You're not qualified to work for it because on your best day is not good enough to earn nothing that God has bestowed upon us through Christ. Jesus paid for it all. And you better make up in your mind right this moment that any good thing that happens to you you better thank Jesus for it. Don't want to hear about what you did. Don't want to hear about your name. Don't want to hear about how you pray. Don't want to hear about what you did. No, no. Any good thing that happened in your life ain't got nothing to do with you. You got it because you were in Christ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People don't like that. They don't like that because people want the glory. But when you realize you're in Christ, you realize that even the thought that you had came from him. I did, I did, I did. The thought to do it came from him. If you wasn't in him, you wouldn't have even had that thought. The grace to do it. The Holy Spirit spoke that to you. You didn't come up with that. I'm trying to get all the glory in this kingdom and that's the problem because men want a lot of glory but you don't get none because everything that happens good to you happens because you are in Christ in him We have as if you want in on any of my promises, you got to get in Christ. And then the Bible declares, though, that Christ says, I did all of this to bring you into it. Because this, this was the, isn't that amazing? Christ says, I'm going to pay for it. You can't get it. it Unless you're in it. So I want, I want you to have it as a gift. Now, if you can't receive it as a gift,
you can't receive it at all. Let that marinate. Because you can't get caught trying to work for it. That disqualifies you to have it. I'm talking about things that come in Christ. You can't get caught trying to earn that. <laughs> you can't earn that. You can't earn nothing that is in Christ. You can't earn it. I said you can't earn it. You can't earn it. You can't earn it. The more you try to earn it, the more you're not going to have it. Because you can't earn it. How dare you jump out of position and try to get anything that God promised in Christ? In, say this after me, position. You got to stay in that position. I am in Christ, which means I am healed by being in Christ. I am protected by being in Christ. I am delivered by being in Christ. Not because I pray. Because it doesn't do you no good to pray if you ain't in Christ. Oh, I'm going to mess with your head. Because, see, this is the stuff we got to get over. We got to get over because we've had such a gospel of struggle, uh, such a gospel of problems, such a gospel of act, uh, demonic activity and a gospel of demonic attacks and, and, and ooh and ooh and you got to be careful and ooh, you got to do that. It, 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 it tickles me because there are people that will pray for something that you have in Christ, thinking your prayer is going to get it manifested. I'm coming after religion. Can I ask you just, just an enlightening question? Okay. Since y'all looking at me like that, y'all forced me to do stuff like that. Just how you going to pray for what you got? If I give you a gift, how stupid do you look praying? For the gift that I gave you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm hitting y'all like past iron when he hits you with that revelation. He's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's when he knew he nailed it. You know, yeah. 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 How, how you going up praying for it? If it's a gift. See, the devil got us all out of position. And this is why we struggle. This is why we're not seeing manifestations of God's goodness all day long, every week, all the time. Because we all out of position. That's the devil's plan. To get you out of position. I want to ask you a question because you didn't answer. You forced me to ask the question, but you ain't answered me. How do you pray for what you got? Let me go one further. You know all them people that got healed in the Bible. How many scriptures do you see them praying before they got it? Hmm? Hmm? How many people? <laughs> I mean, of course, you know, it's a different covenant because I'm trying to show you something. 
They came to him, Father, if you will, heal me. He said, I will. <laughs> and he healed them. They weren't even born again. Didn't even have a promise, didn't even have a covenant. Nothing. And they got it so easy that lepers were cleansed. People who had committed sins were cleansed. But yet, for me and you to be healed, we got to go on a four-day fast. We got to pray some kind of formula. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you, Jehovah Rapha. And the Lord is saying to some of you, you might as well be quiet. Because you are way out of position and the whole prayer is unbelief. We do so much praying out of unbelief. We do so much praying out of panic. We do so much praying, so much praying because the Satan has convinced us in religious tradition that you got something to do with this and you don't. Absolutely nothing to do with anything that comes with salvation. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you why these things, why we're not seeing light versus dark, the manifestations of God, because we, we, we act like them. We act like we don't have a covenant. We act like no changes happen. We, have, we, act like, we act like the promises of God are not yes and amen. We act like we still got to earn it. We act like we still got to. And let me, let me just hit this praying thing because I felt the spirit tell me, go back to that. Go back to that. Go, go back to that. It's pr prayer is talking to your father. Okay? It ain't having a little talk with Jesus, telling him all about your I'm sorry, they did what they did, but now we know better. It's not have a little talk with Jesus, tell him all about your trouble. He'll hear my faintest cry, answer by and by. That is not what prayer is designed to do. Prayer is conversation and communion with your father. It's a relationship. It's you talking to him, him talking to you. It's fellowship. It ain't no wish list. Because everything on your list you already got. So you shouldn't be caught as a believer praying for healing. Praying for protection. Praying for peace. Praying for joy. Praying for deliverance. Praying for provision. You shouldn't be praying for any of those things. Jesus told you that in much. He says, when you come to me, don't think you're going to be heard for your many sayings. I know what you have need of before you ask me. And so he said, don't come to me telling me about what you need. Seek first the kingdom. All these things will be what? Added to you. He said, you don't even need to talk to me about it. <laughs> because, see, some of you think you're protected by your prayer. So if you don't pray, you feel like you're not covered. You're about to get on the plane. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for the blood. We plead the blood. We da -da 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 And if you ain't pray, come on, we got to pray. We got to pray. Why we got to pray? You didn't pray when you got in the car. You didn't say we got to pray. We got to pray. The whole thing is based off of fear. Yeah, I'm gonna run it out. I'm gonna run it out. The whole prayer ain't nothing but fear. The same God that protected you to get out to bed and walk to your bathroom and wash your face. It's the same God that will protect you at 41,000 feet. It don't mean nothing to him. It means something to you. Lord, my child leaving. I got to pray. I got to pray. You got to be careful because what you're about to do is about to do them more harm than good. Because if this prayer is based off of fear, then now it can't be a faith. 
And everything that comes to God is by grace through, oh yeah, I'm preaching, it's by grace through faith. No, you don't pray for nothing you already got, you receive. You just receive it. I receive it. I'm protected. Because I'm in him. Let me ask you something. Is he protected? Huh? Has he conquered everything once and for all? Does he sit over all principalities, powers, diseases? Huh? Come on, you're getting quiet. Don't back up. Does Jesus have authority over all of that? Did he conquer all of that? Did he? Did, are you sure he did? Okay, so he's secure in it. Then he brought you in him so that you can receive what he has. You don't come in there in your position. You give up your position and you come in in his position. So if he's healed, I'm healed. Then I'm protected. And it don't matter what it is. COVID 16, 16, 18, 19, 20, 22, 24. It doesn't matter what's happening in the earth. He ain't being bothered. And if we would get in here, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. See, you claiming Psalms 91 and don't even know what it is. We claim it. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. Well, it ain't a secret no more. The secret place is in him. I'm going to lift him up. I'm going to lift him up because we have preached everything bigger than him. I'm going to lift him up because we have made people fearful. We have made people weak. We made their faith weak. We put them in, in a whole position of we just rejected the adoption that was given to us. We're all out of position. Anything that comes with Christ, you receive. Don't even be caught trying to work for it. Don't even be caught trying to do it. Don't even, don't even let that thought hit you again. You got to leave here. Paul prayed that the eyes of your understanding would be in light. You got to leave here. You, it's like when I do wrong, and I do wrong occasionally. <laughs> you know, whenever I do wrong, I receive my forgiveness so fast that if you got offended, you better get over it quick. Because I'm over it quick. Now, it take me a little while to get over what you did to me. <laughs> But what, but what I do to you, once I say, Father, forgive me. I'm sorry about that. I'm done with it. Why? Because he's not forgiving me for what I did in my merit between him. He's forgiven me by the way he forgave Christ. You say God forgave Christ? Oh, of course he did. Jesus died a sinner. He didn't commit no sin. He took your sin. Hallelujah. See, this is how you stay out of condemnation and guilt and fear. When you mess up, you'll be like, oh, God, forgive me for that. I receive forgiveness. And you walk right on in it. Yeah, we are so out of position. We are so out of position. Come on. You got 10 more minutes in you? Can you take it? Because I know what some of you are saying, well, surely there's something I'm supposed to do. Surely that's something we got to do. And in all that praying and stuff you've been doing, you ain't seeing no manifestation. And then there are people that you think are so deep spiritually, and the only thing deep about them is their faith. Because everything is by grace through faith. Everything is by grace through faith, by grace through faith, by grace through faith. So I don't have to earn nothing, 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 nothing that comes with salvation. I cannot work for it. 
I can't praise him enough. People be tickling me with all of that stuff. Just one more praise, and I feel a breakthrough. If you shout right now, God's going to give you the victory. What the heck? <laughs> I, I, I mean, you, you, if you shout right now, he going to give it to you. Come on, y'all. What in the world have we been doing? He gave it to you over 2,000 years ago. Your praise don't get nothing from God. You can't get a good enough praise to get run from, run around the church, right down the street. You can run all the way to the mall, and it still don't mean nothing. You praise him because he's good, and he's worthy of it. Start stuff like that. That's like manipulation. That's like some child running up in your face and saying, Daddy, you're so beautiful. You're so wonderful. You're so, you know they don't mean it. Just what you want. <laughs> Your praise doesn't get nothing Come that comes with being in Christ. Yeah. Nothing you can do can earn it. It's an, it's, it's, ah, I'm preaching the gospel. It's a, it's a offense to Christ for you to think you can get it any other way than by the blood. Who do you think you are? And this is what Paul is praying. We got all these things, but we don't know we got because we still acting like sinners. They're all out of position. I can't, can't all the riches that have been given to us, we, we can't even receive them. Because we don't even think we're worthy of them because, because oh, God, Lord, I, you got me working this. All identity issues and worthiness issues and all of those things, all of those are in Christ issues. Because you don't see yourself in Christ. That's good. You know, we were talking about the other day about on our Second Kings network about one question was brought up about imposter syndrome. And, and people in the body of Christ got that bad. This, this sense that, 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 that oh, I, I, I ain't nobody, I don't need anything, or surely God couldn't do that to me. God wouldn't use me. God would, uh, uh, <laughs> you right. You exactly right. You ain't nothing. You have nothing. You bring nothing to the table. But in him, you have his status. You don't have yours. You have been adopted. Y'all hear me? You've been adopted. It ain't even about you. It's about the family that adopted you. You got to receive the spirit of adoption. Jesus made you worthy. No, you ain't worthy. Jesus made you worthy. And for all of you people who walk around here in false humility, talking about, it's not about me. We know it. You ain't even got to say that. We know it ain't about you. We know you ain't nothing. We know you ain't got nothing. We know you can't do nothing. Why? Because we know we ain't nothing. Everything we got came from being in him. <laughs> and so I know you didn't get it. It was the goodness of God. It was the blessing of being in Christ that God favored your life. It ain't nothing to do about you. Say, I'm in him. You got to see yourself in him. So now, no thing that comes with salvation can be earned. This is what gets people ticked off. They get a, it gets them ticked off with God when things go wrong. Because they 
think they deserve better based on how good they think they've been. You can go to church every Sunday, preach, sing, do whatever, and the enemy can attack your life and defeat you, and it has nothing to do with you bringing up your record before God. God says the enemy defeated you because you're out of position. <laughs> you, can't, you can't whoop him apart from being in me because you ain't got no authority. Come on, you know what, the, what, they, what they told the sons of Sceva? Jesus, I know. Paul, I know, but who are you? In other words, you ain't in him. You, we don't have to obey you. You don't have no authority on your own. I'm telling you, that's the problem. Some, <laughs> some of you are trying to have faith in your faith. That's not what the Bible told you. It said have faith in God. You're not to be trusting in you. This is why a lot of people won't pray for people. Because you think you have something to give to a person. Yeah, that's why you won't pray. You won't pray. You won't lay hands. You won't do it. Because you think, okay, like, like you're going to produce this. You ain't got nothing. Nothing. You ain't got no power. You ain't got nothing. You ain't even got no authority. The authority you have is in him. That's why you got to say in his name. And no devil's coming out in yours. It's his authority. And you ain't got to work that authority up. The devil could have been out. By the time you get through with all of your little ritual, the person could have been set free 20 minutes ago. All that stuff didn't produce no power. We got to get to church and especially black people out of thinking speed and spit and emotions equal anointing. Be wasting time in church. By the time we get through with everything you have done, there ain't even no strength left to have nothing else. Just get up there. Stand in the name of Jesus. Say what needs to be said. Do what needs to be done. And let the power of the Holy Ghost do the rest. Being all these prayer lines about to break people's necks. Because we want them it's just <laughs> take it. And if you don't fall, you didn't take it. No, I didn't take it because you ain't got nothing to give me. I got to get you out yourself. It's in him. When Jesus cast those devils out of the money act, he said one word. He said, go. I'm telling you, if you don't get out of all this emotionalism, thinking in some kind of way, that, I mean, it's almost like that's what psychics and people do. They conjure. <laughs> you, you know, boy, we be whooping up stuff, man, in the church, man. And I, I, hey, trust me, I received forgiveness for all of because I was taught wrong just like you. And I mean, I've taught all that stuff. And when I shut all that stuff down, people are like, mm, he changing. He used to be on fire. Because I used to spend all that energy running around the church, jumping and dancing, thinking that produced the glory. <laughs> I like the way I'm preaching. <laughs> if I must say so myself. All that don't mean nothing if you don't receive. If you don't receive. Everything with Christ is a gift. 
Now, there are four points I have for you, but I don't even want to give them to you because I just want, I just want to leave you. <laughs> I just, I do. I want to leave you chewing on it. Because, yeah, there's some other things that need to be tied to this, but this one part is just sufficient enough. So, so whenever I get the opportunity to preach again, I'll give you these four things. But, but the bottom line to this is, is I, I just got to get us in position. I, you got to read the book of Ephesians. That's your homework this week. Christ has paid for all of this, and he says, don't ever be caught trying to earn it. If you're a child of God and you're a child of mine, don't ever let the devil do it. Every time you do that, you've gotten out of position. Don't be responding to fear. Because when you respond to fear, it's the devil pulling you out of position. And then you'll be caught trying to make sure you work for something. All you did is word yourself. Think about all the things that you worried about <laughs> that didn't even happen. Think about, think, think about all this stuff. You th and then you did some things and you thought that that's what made it happen. If that is the case, that means every time you got delivered, healed, protected, and blessed, and you did not pray, or you did not decree, or you did not do, did not, did not do, 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 how did you get it? How did it happen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. <laughs> to the believer. He wants to show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Now, religion can get so deep in us that I can give you good news like that, that all you have to do is receive it. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to. And somewhere in you, you'll be like, uh -uh, that, that, that ain't right. Because <laughs> you can't even receive good news. Can't even receive it. You'll be shocked how your life will be. If you just believe God, receive it, Father. Get up every day and receive it. I'm in Christ. He promised to heal, deliver, protect, provide. He did. You'd be amazing how breakthroughs and blessings will start just running through your front door if you just say, you know what? I'm rich in him. I receive my inheritance as a child of God. Everything I need in this earth realm, I receive it. Just thank him for it. Thank you, Jesus. You made this easy. I'm in you. You'd be shocked how your body will begin to heal. If you say, well, you know what? You promised me healing. You promised it to Christ. I'm in Christ. He's healed. With his stripes, I was healed. I'm healed. I received my healing. My body is being restored right now. He's trying to hand out gifts and we can't even receive them. He died for it. He's trying to give it to us and we can't even receive it. to receive it just receive it Jesus I, I, I can't get y'all I break a y'all inheritance can't even get you to get it I'm trying to show forth the exceeding riches of my goodness towards you to the so I can just tell principalities and power you see that you, you see how good I am I'm trying to show the world how good I am to my children they can't even receive it My four points to you next time are going to be obedience, compliance, resistance, and assurance. 
You're going to be shocked when you hear these words. When you hear how all God wants you to do is just align with him. He says, everything you need, I got that covered. I just don't want you messing it up. Your relationship with God is not to get it. It's to stay in a position where he can just give it. And you stay in a receiving position. So nothing you do will qualify you for it. Things you can do can disqualify you from receiving it. Not him giving it. I'm going to say it for the last time. If he has already given it to you, how is he going to give it again? If he's already given it to you, how are you going to do anything to qualify for it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In him. Hallelujah. Man, this is Pete. This is what I'm telling you. As I close, it reminds me me of all the places I've been in the in the in the in in the in America and in some parts of the world and I'm reminded back way back when I started preaching and God started opening doors I'm remind I'm reminded of when my grandmother you know she taught me drug me to church my mother drug me to church when mama was at work she made sure I was in church I start preaching, she would just be so wrong. Well, I'm so proud of you, so proud of you, so proud of you. Why you just, you, boy, I'm so proud. Tell her, tell her all my cousins, they mad at me because she's telling them, y'all need to be like Ron. Y'all need to be like Ron. And they're like, I'm not trying to be like Ron. <laughs> and I'm like, quit telling them that. Just let them be who they are because you got them mad at me. She was just so proud, so proud, so proud, so proud, so proud. And then doors start opening. I never will forget the day. I stay. Say, careful of what? She was like, now nah, all that, all that running around the world, all that flying. She probably ain't been on a plane in a day in her life. Because you know, now you know, <laughs> you gotta watch. You know the love of money, and 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 uh, in other words, the blessings scared her. I'm not saying that to me. She in heaven. She great cloud of witness. She goodness of God starts showing up. She got concerned. Afraid for me. It was all she meant it. Heard I was going somewhere. They all for oh Lord. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, you ain't even flying. I'm the one flying. What you scared about? Hear me, church. And hear me well opening up a floodgates of his goodness to our lives there is an inherent religious thing down on the inside of you that'll make you think now nah, I gotta be careful no when God started blessing you that's the time to care less Let him fill it. it. Kept you when you were broke will keep you when you're rich. The same is the same. It's the same thing. 
We have so much stuff in us. We got to get out. Lift your hands. I'm done. I want you to receive. I want you to receive. Receive. The promises are between God and Christ. They're already finished. They're settled. They're unbreakable. They're unbroken. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. Salvation has been secured and everything that has to do with it, everything that Adam did, Christ came to redo and rectify, and it is settled. Every redemptive promise is between God and Christ. It is settled. God would no more break his word to Christ. Therefore, now, when you and I receive him, we are adopted into that family, that fellowship. Therefore, we become heirs of Christ. Everything that is in him, we receive by being in him. That's how you get it. See yourself in him. Wake up in him. You're not go you don't have to be doing something deeply spiritual to be in him. You brush your teeth in him. You cook breakfast in him. You play with your kids in him. The church has got to get out of thinking everything spiritual requires a song, a hymn, or a reading of a Bible verse. Are spiritual with your kids on their head. You are in him. You are in him. In him we live, move, and have our being. We are in him, in him, in him, in him, in him, in him, in him. It's a place of secure and peace and shalom and wholeness. And I'm telling you, nothing, 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 nothing can stop what has already been consummated in Christ. And you got to see yourself. You've already been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly church. I want you to chew on this. I mean this. Today I was going to start on point number one, two, three, four, and go down that. And the Spirit of the Lord had me back up and say, no, you can't even preach that yet. Now, this is not an indictment against you, but he knows you. He knows what you need. He says, you got you to gotta, you gotta break down this, this whole works and, and this whole religious thing people are in. That's why they can't even receive the revelations. You can't receive the revelations. You, you can't even receive it because I, the way we've been trained and taught and all of these things. But I'm telling you, if you can push past it and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and get your thinking on this level trust it that's your job it's by grace through faith your job is you got to believe this push past it Enter into the rest of the Lord. For the rest of your life, live it from a position of being in Christ, expecting this goodness. Expecting it. I get delivered because I'm with him. <laughs> I get blessed because I'm in him. I get, I get healed because I'm in him. Oh yeah, I get wisdom because I'm in him. I, I get righteousness because I'm in him. I get forgiven because I'm in him. I get authority because I'm in him. I have the gifts of the spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost, because I'm in him, 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 in him. And when any good thing happens to you, you say, Jesus, to you and God be all the glory. Thank you, Father. Now, this is how, this is how you speak now. This is how you decree things. This is how you declare things. This is how you receive. Now, 
Get your healing right now. Let's just get it. Let's just get it right now. If you're in a financial situation, get it right now. My God shall supply uh, all my needs. Uh-oh, here we go, here we go. According, according to what? Your job? No, 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 no! According to his riches and glory. Huh, huh, huh? Hidden Christ Jesus. Good God. Your faith ain't faith until it's in that position. Hallelujah. Did he work on your mind this morning? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. In him. Let's get ready to give. The ministers will be down here for anybody who wants anything extended in prayer. Y'all got to forgive me 30, but I just, we, we about to break out. I don't want to announce it before pastor does too fast, but we, we about to break out of these, um, you know, COVID protocols. Time, time to break out. You know, um, while you're giving, keeping, you know, it's sad to me. This, this is, this is sad to me. It, it really is. This grieves my heart. You know, I was at, um, right, I, I found myself in a meeting with a lot of pastors, and we were talking about, you know, is the church going back to normal? Is the church, you know, is the church going back to normal? Is the church going back to normal? You know, are people going to come back to church, you know, and all this? over and how much, con it was a consensus that people are really not coming back to church church like it is we're going to get used to in-person in online stuff and I was sitting in the meeting and I just thought about like I wanted to say it so bad but if I would have said it I would have messed up everything in the room I wanted to say you know right down this right down the road from this meeting is Cowboy Stadium AT&T Stadium where the Cowboys play I guarantee you, Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, and all them are not sitting around the table wondering if that stadium is going to fill back up. They're not sitting around willing to concede that we'll have half the fans here and half watching by TV. They just built New Rangers ballpark. I promise you, they didn't just build that for it to be half empty and we just concede that some people are not coming back to the stadium. Opening day. When they open Ranger Stadium. 38,000 fans went to watch it. And the tripped out thing about church folks is they ain't sitting at the house. They going everywhere else. Doing everything. The devil is a liar. And if you sitting out watching me, you better get your in in the house of God. Away with this mess. No, the church is coming back. You'll be sitting at the house. Them same folks will be at the Cowboys game. Sitting there watching basketball. Sitting around people for hours while their kid hitting baseballs and kicking soccer balls. Yeah, I said it. It's a spirit. It's a demonic spirit. We're going to push through it. I said all that to say that we, we, we ain't in a hurry to get out of here no more. <laughs> That's why I said all that. <laughs> Amen.
Praise God. Stand up on your feet. <laughs> Pastor, you got anything to add to this? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Hand me my phone. Um, I, uh, Char's waving at me. I'm missing an announcement. It's in my pocket, the other one, bro. The other pocket. The other one on this side, bro. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. Oh, yeah, ministers. I want to meet with all the ministers here at 3 p.m. Me and Pastor Iron got, a, got something to share.